Hello and welcome. In this video, we will talk about periodic boundaries in ANSYS Fluent Machine Watertight Geometry Workflow. In particular, we will learn about the different types of periodicities, how they are used in simulations, and why it is important to include these boundaries in the machine phase. Also, we will explore how to extract the parameters needed for a manual setup of these boundaries. Let's get started. Periodic models can be defined as a series of repeating patterns. For example, the rotor of an actual fan is a repetition of angular sectors that include one of its plates. In this case, we have a rotational periodicity since the patterns repeat around the same axis of rotation. When analyzing turbulence development or heat transfer, we can find geometries with patterns that repeat along a linear direction. This is called translational periodicity. Dividing the model into just one of these patterns reduces the mesh size and the computational cost. Periodic boundary conditions impose that what exits through one boundary is equal to what enters through the opposite boundary. This takes into account the adjacent parts of the model that are not simulated. Note that Periodic boundaries at the opposite sides of a geometry must be consistent and have the same topology. There are several advantages of including the periodic boundary setup during the meshing phase. The process enforces the mesh on opposite periodic boundaries to be exactly the same or conform. Having a conformal mesh on periodic boundaries is the key point of setting them during the meshing phase instead of during the solver phase. This removes the need to set up an interface, speeding up the setup of the periodic boundaries. No interpolation of the solution is required since the mesh nodes would match on both sides, ensuring accuracy of the solution compared to the cases with inconsistent cell sizing on the two periodic boundaries. Also, the process will automatically set up the reference frame of the zones in the solver phase, a feature especially useful when handling complex models. Let's now discuss some best practices that are good to keep in mind during the CAD preparation phase before setting up the periodic boundaries in the meshing process. The ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight workflow gives the user two options to set up the periodic boundaries, an automatic one and a manual one. The automatic method is extremely convenient and fast in setting up the periodic boundaries as it automatically detects the angle and axis of rotation or the translation vector of the periodicity. Keep in mind that there are some scenarios where it would not be able to detect the periodicity parameters. First, when the boundaries are non-planar surfaces. Then, when the normal to the planar faces does not align with the tangent vector of the circular arc. Also, if the rotational angle is smaller than 10 degrees, the periodicity parameters may not be accurate. In these cases, the manual method comes in handy. When using this method, the user must specify the inputs for rotation or translation relative to the selected boundary. It is a good practice to extract these values for the rotation or translation during the CAD phase and note them down. They can also be used to verify that the automatic setup of the periodic boundaries is correct. Let's explore how to do so using ANSYS Discovery. For a model with translational periodicity, we need to know the translational shift along the three global axes. In simple cases, one can use the measure tool and select the periodic boundaries to estimate the distance. If the model is not aligned with any of the axes, then it is easier to pick the corner on each face, note down the coordinates and estimate the shift along each axis. In the case of rotational periodicity, the parameters to provide are the periodicity angle, the rotation axis origin and the rotation axis direction. 
The recommended method to detect the rotation angle is to use the measure tool. Select one of the arcs and note down the arc angle. To see the axis of rotation, click on the arc and then click on the axis tool under the create group of the design tab. Now, to get the axis origin, activate the measure tool and select the axis and then switch to the select origin option and then click on the origin. Here, the axis origin will be listed. Note down these values to use them later as inputs for the rotational periodicity. You can get the direction by checking the alignment of the axis with one of the origin axis. When dealing with periodic models, it is always recommended to align the axis of translation or rotation with one of the axis of the global coordinates system. Another important thing to consider is that only one set of periodic boundaries is supported when using the watertight workflow. Hence, in models with multiple regions that are aligned and have the same periodicity, it is suggested to group all the periodic faces on each side under a common named selection. Let's summarize what we have discussed in the video. There are two types of periodicities, translational and rotational. Setting up the periodic boundaries during the meshing phase enforces conformal mesh on both sides, increasing the accuracy of the results, improving the computational speed, and reducing the time to set up the model during the solver stage. In fluent meshing watertight workflow, we can set up periodic boundaries automatically or manually. In particular cases, the automatic method would not detect the input parameters and the manual method should be used instead. As a best practice, it is suggested to extract the needed inputs from the geometry before moving to the meshing stage. Remember that only one set of periodic boundaries is supported, hence it is convenient to group all of the faces on one side of the model under the same level and do the same on the opposite side. With that, we have come to the end of our video.